Teaching Science Online, Episode 643. There's a free webinar coming up to help you and your students have a relationship that is respectful, responsible, and engaged. Stay tuned at the end of the show to learn more about this free webinar. The 10 Minute Teacher Podcast with Vicki Davis. Every weekday, you'll learn powerful, practical ways to be a more remarkable teacher today. So today we're talking with Chris Anderson, passionate science educator, executive producer of Science Around Cincy. It's a web series that features scientists and engineers in the Cincinnati area, but he's also an instructional coach for the Hamilton County ESC and works with teachers and students in the Cincinnati public schools. So Chris, we're actually going to focus on science education and teaching online. Now you have a video series and tell us a little bit about the series because this is obviously something that science educators in particular are going to have to use uh, resources like this in order to build their lessons around. So kind of describe what you have and, and the approach educators could use with teaching content online in this way. So what we wanted to do was create a video series that kind of shared the stories of scientists and engineers, especially on a local level, because I think sometimes kids think that scientists are often this like very ivory tower, you know, locked away doing experiments. And that's really not the case. They're so often out in the field, they're collecting data, but they're also right here. And you don't have to, you know, we wanted to kind of demystify the the scientists that they're not some supreme intelligent uh, person. They're just someone with a good sense of curiosity and who asks good questions and have a way to measure their experiments. So that was kind of like the one goal. And then our other goal would, was to get kids engaged in science. We wanted to sh- get them excited to learn about science because some, sometimes when we're teaching, it's so easy to get caught up in what the kids need to know instead of how we go about learning about our world. And that's really what science is about. So kind of connecting what kids have to learn in the classroom, whether it's about ecosystems or forces or anything else to what scientists actually you actually do and, and use that information to find out about the world around them. So you've aligned these with next generation science standards. Give me an example, a great video and the standards and how a science teacher who's looking to quickly move to teach online could kind of build a unit around it. One of the scientists we featured is named Dr. Brenda Hunda. She's the invertebrate paleontologist at the Cincinnati Museum Center. We went out and looked for trilobite fossils. This is one of the best places in the world to find fossils from about 450 to about 380 million years ago. And you can go out to any old roadside creek bed and find fossils from almost half a billion years ago. That which was, you know, as you can imagine, a ton of fun to to film, but it was also a fossils, not just how fossilization works, but index fossiling and relative dating. Those are all standards that you could tie into with good questioning our episodes. And we talk a lot about some of those things. We also talked about adaptations, what sort of traits a individual may have to help them survive in their environment. Like I said, it was a ton of fun to shoot. Brenda's really cool. But we also put in with that, not just a discussion guide with some questions, but a lab that models relative dating and laws of stratigraphy, mostly with stuff you can probably find around your house. So if you are in a pinch, you could have assign your kids the, this video, have them do some reflections, and then maybe even have them do an activity at, activity at home. Because I'm sure a lot of the science teachers that are listening to this are thinking, you know, science is hands-on. You need, you need to have the kids doing labs. And I 100% agree. And you can't really have them do labs 100% on their own. But there are some activities you, you can have kids do, do on their own that are totally safe that you can find the materials around the house for. And of course, uh, you're an instructional coach and I work with instructional technology. You can embed this in Edpuzzle. You can have Mm -hmm. questions. You can have open-ended questions. It does. And then Edpuzzle also, if your school has been impacted by coronavirus closures, will extend a pro account if your IT um, instructional technology person applies for that for your school, which will give you the capability to have, you know, all the features that you want with that. So here we take the video and, and you have a teacher, let's say, Chris, you have some teachers who come to you, which they will Mm -hmm. and say, okay, Chris, you know, how am I going to set this up to be engaging? So you've given us one example. They could have reflections, you know, scientific journals. They can reflect inside the video, use Edpuzzle. You have this example. What are some other tips that you would give for moving science online? 
So I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of really great free resources out there right now between FET and the Howard Hughes Institute. You know, it, it doesn't have to be just a video where, you know, videos can be kind of passive. Science teachers, I think by nature, they, they're inquisitive. They want questioning. They want to, they want to play with things. They want to see, they want to break stuff apart and see what's there. So I would look at PBS learning media. There's plenty of simulations and online activities there. So there's lots of things already out there that you just kind of need to pick and choose what's going to work over the next few weeks that you know your kids need to be familiar with or kind of start to work towards mastery on. And then I would, you're almost curating a, uh, a collection instead of, you know, direct instruction. So, and it can be an, actually a good opportunity if you're looking to do more flipped classroom things. We always want more time with our kids and want that the time with our kids to be really valuable. So this could be a good way to start, you know, flipping your classroom, maybe not a complete flip, but maybe like a, just like a 90 degree rotation mm -hmm. and start putting some of that stuff online so the kids come into your classroom with a little more background knowledge with some questions to ask themselves and then you can spend the time doing what you really love to do and that's doing the inquiry based things doing the project based learning doing the labs well and it's such an opportunity to experiment I mean, we're talking yes. about experimenting with our pedagogy. Science teachers, that's what we teach. A science right. teacher teaches to experiment. So why not experiment in this way with some tried and true methods that have been working for those who have blended their classroom? And even if you're not completely going online, I think one of the big arguments for blending your classroom is that it's just a small step to a completely online classroom. It's not such a jolt to the system, to the teacher, as well as the students. If you've never, ever had an electronic, uh, I always talk about how you have to have bricks and clicks. You have to have both <laughs> there. So Chris, you're dedicated to excellent teaching and to helping kids love science. What are some of the things as educators are you know, designing their online work as well as face-to-face -face work that you think are important for helping kids truly get excited about science? I think one of the most important things is that kids need to see the relevance in what they're doing. And I think even when I've talked to kids who have watched our series, I'll, I'll make a classroom appearance and like, oh, that's a science round Cincy guy. And they'll ask me about the frogs because that was our first episode. It was about the, the researcher, Clara Duamaral from Mount St. Joe. She researches how frogs are able to freeze through the winter. That's their survival mechanism. And they just freeze solid. Wow. That blows your mind. Exactly. You don't think about what happened. Like what happens to a frog? You, just, you don't, you know, you don't see them in the winter, but they're there. They release certain chemicals to act as almost like antifreeze. They keep ice crystals from, from forming and damaging their cells. But there, there's no brain activity. There's no heartbeat. They are frozen solid. They're in suspended animation. And then when the weather goes above, above freezing, they thaw and then hop along and do their little frog thing. But when the kids are asking about the frogs, that's when like, okay, I got you now. I, I, I got you reeled in because then they want to know. They're already curious. Kids are curious by nature. They, they want to learn things. They want to explore. I mean, if, if any of your te if, if your listeners have kids, they know like they'll get into things they shouldn't get into. And that's just their natural curiosity. So you just got to like find a way to like spark that and get it out of them a little bit. And then once they're curious and like, what's happening? Well, whoa, it's been really warm this winter. What happened to the frogs? Are the frogs okay? Did they have enough to eat? That's when you're like, okay, now let's, now we got, you know what? That's a good question. Let's actually ask someone. Let's, let's do an investigation of ourselves. Let's, let's go out and see if there's frog. Let's do, let's do a, a ecosystem survey and see not just what, how many frogs we got, but how many insects and, you know, what kind of plants there are. Let's see what kind of biodiversity we have just on our own school grounds. So there's, like I said, it's, it's all about getting the kids curious. And I think when you make it relevant to their lives, that's when that curiosity sparks. Well, and you can even survey the biodiversity from your front or back window if you have a window. Yeah. I mean, there's right. lots of things that you can do with that. Does science around Cincy, could that be used by science teachers anywhere in the world? Anywhere in the world. You don't have to be anywhere near Cincinnati. You don't even have to have heard of the city Cincinnati. <laughs> you don't have to visit. <laughs> it's all online. Yeah, we're all on YouTube. So just look for Science Around Cincy, subscribe. And then all our bonus features and teach resources are on our website at sciaroundcincy.com. So educators, science educators in particular, this one's for you because so many are saying, well, I can't do hands-on online. Yes, you can. There are ways to do it. Chris has given us a five or six good ways and as well as his resources. There are a lot of other resources out there as well for science teachers. We can do this and let's use this as an opportunity to innovate and to learn and to even join other science teachers online and share best practices. Thanks, Chris. 
Go to coolcatteacher.com forward slash respect to sign up for Linda Cardenas free webinar on Thursday, March 19th. It will help you and your students develop a relationship of respect, responsibility, and engagement. That's coolcatteacher.com forward slash respect. This webinar is free and will help improve your classroom management abilities. Again, that's coolcatteacher.com forward slash respect.